So, okay. What we're going to talk about today is a little bit of Greek history. Okay, the dude on the left is Plato. He's got the nice flowy hair, kind of like me. The dude on the right is all materialistic. That's Socrates. You should be a comedian. Anyway, they're the guys who come up with a lot of these sequences and theories and stuff. And the reason being is a really simple but basic reason. They didn't have a basic concept of decimals. Yeah, here. Is that guy the same person on the board? No, that's Mr. Ryan. That's Mr. Ryan. Let's call him Pluto for now. So. Wait, wait, wait. So Ryan has nice flowy hair and I don't? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, so we've got a golden ratio. We haven't really talked about that, but these are guys who basically spend a lot of time sitting around going, wow, let's look at numbers. And going, wow, these are really cool numbers. Are you ladies? Totally geeky. I get it. Hey, look. That's good. We learned about this in Eagle Poem when we were in like fifth grade. We're not going to talk about golden ratio today. Oh. Just we putting did it up there. learn about that. You did learn about it, yes. But we will get there at some point in the future, I have no doubt. But the perfect squares you have talked about. And we're going to look at this as a type of a sequence. Are you sure? Take your full body and divide it by the sequence. Yeah, one of those things is golden ratio. Anyway. Isn't it called tie or something like that? Feet. Feet? Okay. So, looking at that sequence, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We've got a sequence. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Do you all see that? I see it. Great. Your warm up is if s of n denotes the nth term of a sequence of perfect squares, find a formula. Wait, can you go back to the Okay. So, we've got a sequence. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. If s of n denotes the nth term of a sequence, find the formula. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to find the formula for perfect squares. You can talk to your shoulder partner. Yeah, John. Do you know the answer? No. Okay. Huh? What? Well, uh, talk to me in a second about that, okay? Alright. So, take a couple seconds, come up with something. Ow. One, four, nine. 1625. Hey, all my notes. That's being funny. My sticks. Okay, I'm wasting time. I love it. Okay. 
One, four, nine, sixteen, and so on. So what is the formula for S of n such that S of n will denote the nth term? I'll give you guys about ten more seconds. What do you guys think? Nick? Is F, is S and like F of S? Yeah, could be. S we're using for a sequence, but yeah. So the idea is this. If the number of our terms is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth, is 1 squared, does that give us this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Does S of 2 give us this? Yeah. Does S of 3 give us this? Alright. So the next question, we know 25 is in there. What about, what about 169? Is 169 in this sequence? Is 169 in that sequence? No. No, because it's not a, um, Perfect square? Uh -huh. Perfect okay. square number. It's not a perfect square. So we don't think there is any n. Oh, no, it is because it's 13. 13. Okay, it's 13 squared. Yeah. Okay, so it is. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there a button on our calculator? Yeah. Square root? Yeah. It's over, it's over the x squared button. So if you hit second x squared, you can oh, take the square root of 169. This. What about this, though? Oh, okay, got it. Sorry. Is there an n? So that we can get s of n equals 200. No. What does n equal? Brian? Um, it wouldn't be a perfect square. Okay. But there's still a way to solve it. There's a way to solve it, but it's not a perfect square. All right? Pretty key. But would you say that's not in the sequence if you can't have 14.14 n term? Well, let's ask about that then. Up till this point, we said that every one of these is an integer. We've always looked at one. Two, three, four. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at these whole numbers, these integers, and we're going to see what's going on if we wanted to find, say, s of pi. If I plug pi in, where does that fall for n? Somewhere in here? Yeah. What does that look like? Okay, so we can definitely do it on our calculator, but what does this really mean? Especially if you're a dude like Socrates or Plato, <coughs> where... <laughs> His name's Plato, but how do you deal with these guys who don't have calculators and have literally chisels and rocks that they're carving this stuff into? No, they didn't. Yes, they did. They had paper. Did they have they pie? paper in Pies? Yeah, I guess they did have paper like that. Okay. So did they have pie? Did they have pie? They had an idea of what pie was, but they had a very... For them, decimals were a really weird thing. So pie itself was where they called pi 22 over 7. That's awesome. <laughs> Wait, is 22 over 7 a fraction of pi? No. Does pi have a fraction? No. It's an irrational number. It can't be written as a number over a number. It gets kind of close. Uh, hold on one second. The reason is that's the best they can come up with. It's no good derivation of. Uh, yeah. Wait, do we have to work on this? It's still pretty close, so it worked out pretty well for their calculation. Okay. So. So the question is this. The question is this, if we say n equals pi, does that mean anything? Does this have meaning? No, because we can't, it means that it's like the pi term. It's the pi term. 
And in this concept, where we're looking at specific, yeah, this is yours. This is specific to what? To the integers for the sequence, the first term, the second term, the fourth term, the fifth term. The pipe terms does not have any tangible meaning for it. How about this? If we're thinking in the realm of perfect squares, if we're thinking in the realm of perfect squares, does n equal negative 1 have any meaning? Does n equal negative 1 have any meaning? No. Why not? Because you, you, you can't have like negative sides to a square. Okay, we can't have negative sides to a square. Alright? Why not? It would be like in a different dimension. Okay, Wait, we so would be talking about a different plane. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So 169 is a perfect square. It is. It's 13 squared. It's 13 squared. So 169 is a perfect square. Alright? It is 200. So, how can we prove that 169 is a perfect square? How can we prove that 169 is a perfect square? By making a square and 13 on each side. Okay, so if we make a square, 13 units wide, I'm not going to do all dots. Do we have to do all the dots? No. We can do the same thing, and you could actually take the time and go through this. That's one way. That's one way. What would be another way to find out if 169 is a perfect square? Martha? Find the square root. Find the square root? Okay. But you're Greek. I'm Greek. Square roots are kind of a novel idea. So how can you do about it something that you do understand? Well, do we know that 2 times 2 is 4? Yeah. Okay, and I know this is weird for you guys, because at this point, to you, you can go this direction, or you can go this direction. I can say 2 times 2 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, same thing, doesn't make a difference. These guys have barely a concept of 0 at this point in their lives. Okay? Taking square roots, taking decimals, this is a hard idea for them. So one thing we could do is we could keep going out. We could say, 6th term, well that gives me 36. 7th term, that gives me 49, 64. 81, 100, 121, 144, 169. Oh, wait, what do you know? The 13th term gives me 169. It follows that pattern. All right? If we're to graph this, if we're to graph this thing, Okay. Can I borrow Reagan? Go for it. What about me? No, Papa. Alright. What does that mean? Guys. He's not next. Hey, hey. Okay. If we're to graph this, and thinking back to this concept of this is our n, so we're going to call our x axis, in this case, n, and s of n. What is our graph going to look like if we were to plot these points, right? It's going to look like a curve. Okay, it's going to have a curve. Is it going to be a connected, continuous line? Uh, or is it going to be a set of discrete data points? And by discrete, I mean single, individual points. Single. Okay, why? Because um, there's, like, at the time they didn't know decimals and stuff, so they couldn't have used decimals to fill in the spaces in between. Okay, so at the time, hard to use decimals. If we're talking about perfect squares, what kind of elements can make a perfect square? Frankie. I was going to say, like, for every n there is an s of n. Okay, for every n there is an s of n, that's true. And that's basic mapping concepts. But I could also put a 1.5, could map to something else. Why is it that we're sticking with these? And it has to do with the fact that we're looking at perfect squares. We're trying to stick with perfect squares, how they're defined, how the Greeks defined them. Okay? And if we look at that and we graph it, what is 1 squared? 1. 1. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 
4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. That's 20. That is 20. 25. So on and so forth. 36. And we get a graph that looks like this. Okay? So we start getting this graph. And the question we ask is, what is the domain of this function? One of the things we're trying to figure out is, what can we use for our inputs, and what are, what's the domain of this? Oops. So if I ask you guys, what's the domain for n, given this context? Rebel? All real numbers. No. no. Pi is a real number. All integers. All integers. What are integers? Good question. So in this case, n is an element of all integers. That's supposed to be a capital. That's an I. Whole numbers? Whole numbers above zero. Whole numbers above zero. So all whole numbers 